constantly trying to corral everybody who's just finished to throw your neurons on the floor. Come on, <laughs> okay. let's see them. Let's all put them down and throw them on the floor. And they end up on the floor in a great big pile. Or kind of like this. And then we start looking at them and we start saying, okay, who's connected to who? Can you find a place where a synapse would actually be being made? Let's point one out. Here? Right. So you've got the nerve terminals of the yellow cell body, white axon neuron. Those green nerve terminals are synapsing on the green dendrites of that multicolored neuron right there. All right. So that multicolored neuron, where does it connect to? What happens? Follow its axon. Where does it go? This one? Nope. The one that, here, you just had the synapse. So let's oh. follow the receiving neuron. Yeah, that multicolored one. Where is it going? It goes down here and there. So what? So its nerve terminals are going to two different places. Well, that's pretty interesting. Two different neurons are getting the output of that multicolored sparkly neuron. All right, so let's look at those two neurons. We've got this great big pink neuron with the black dendrites that branch. So that's a different kind of a dendrite, not just a simple dendrite. It's a dendrite that's multiple and branched. What do you think those little white things are on those dendrites? Those uh, receptors? Some, they could be receptors. The other thing we know about dendrites is they generally do branch a lot. And on each of the tertiary and maybe even on the secondary branches, they get these little bumps. And we call these bumps spines. And they're only about a micron high. And we think that the synapses actually are occurring right on those bumps or spines. So there's an attempt with these little white ones on this particular pink neuron to try to model the dendritic spine. So you can see multiple branches with the little bumps on them. So that might be the place where the synapses take place. Um, so yes, you've got a, lots of branching dendrites on this big pink neuron. And no, notice on this one, which I haven't made according to the directions at all, the, the nucleus is eccentric. So instead of having a nucleus in the middle, the nucleus is off to one side because that's one of the typical things that one finds in many different kinds of neurons is that the nucleus in the cell body is not in the dead center, but off to one side. All right, so that's a nice straight pathway. What about the black neuron with the yellow dendrites that was the second output from the multicolored one? Let's continue to trace that pathway. So that goes... That's right. Up to here. It comes back. Where is it? Where, where is it synapsing? With this one. Okay, so it's synapsing on the, the original yellow neuron with the blue and red dendrites. So that's kind of curious that it goes backwards. What might that be? Is that a feedback loop? That is. That is a feedback loop. Absolutely. And neurons do that all the time. They send the same information back to the beginning for reconsideration and reassessment. Good. All right. So what else do we have here? Um, go back to the pink neuron. Okay. How many different inputs does the pink neuron get? Well, it has one here. Okay, so it gets from the yellow-brown. One there. Come from the multicolored. Where else does it get? Well, this is dendrite to dendrite, right? No, no. the red neuron with the white axon, this is the nerve terminal. Oh. So this is nerve terminal to dendrite. So, oh, okay. So the pink neuron has input from how many neurons? One, two, three? Three, exactly. So it's getting multiple inputs. It's not just a one-on-one, -on -one, but there's multiple inputs that converge onto the pink neuron. So we have both convergence onto the pink neuron, and then we have divergence in terms of the nerve terminals outputs going not just to one, but to multiple. So we have that um, in terms of that multicolored one. Also, I think, where else do we have it? Any other places we see have divergent outputs? Mm. This one? Yep, oh, that, that is the multicolored that, that's one. That's the multicolored, sorry. good. Yeah. Okay. This one? Yeah, this long white axon actually does that too. So there's lots of places where we've got that kind of convergence. All right, um, that's pretty much all the circuit things we can make here. So this one is just not connected. 
Well, let's make it connected. Change it so it is connected. Turn it so one way or another. Make it connect. Like that? Exactly. Would you have two connections? Absolutely. You could have multiple, many multiples, to strengthen the, the effect. Um, in fact, your nerve terminal isn't just two branches. There can be multiple, multiple branches. And there could be offshoots and multiple branches off of the offshoots. So, so a neuron will receive maybe a thousand up to ten thousand inputs and it could have up to ten thousand outputs. So the number of connections in both directions, the convergence and the divergence is huge. And that's part of what makes it so complex. All right, so well, let's see if we can rearrange. Let's just do something like this. All right, so now what have I, what have I put down on the table? Okay, so if we start with this one, it's feeding this one and this one. All right, so it's got divergent outputs that go into two different pathways. Keep going. Okay, and this one is connecting to here. Gotcha. But that's too far away, right? That one's actually connecting to this one. So that one, so there's two inputs to the multicolored. Mm -hmm. All right. And then the multicolored is feeding this one. Feeds the pink. And nothing over there. <laughs> right. And... Okay, and then following this one, it's connecting to this. Right, so it connects to the brown. Which then connects back to here. All right. So that's a loop. So there's a feedback loop right there. What else, what happens on this other side? Okay, so this one feeds there, and then it comes down to the, into the pink one. To the synapses onto the pink one. Okay. So this red and blue and white neuron is actually bypassing how many other neurons? Oh, all of these? Yeah, so if the same signal starts at the same time up at the multicolored one at the top, where is it, which, one, which, which synapse onto the pink neurons, dendrites, are is going to get there first? Probably that one, yes, because it's one. just going... Because there's only one synapse. Okay. So this is what we call a feed-forward. So the information comes forward more quickly in this pathway than it comes forward in that pathway. Oh, okay. Whereas the information is traveling... Here is a feedback because right. oh, it comes okay. back. So if one considered that there'd be another output over here of some sort. Okay. All right. So now we've been looking at neurons that all have dendrites and axons. I'm going to put another cell on the table. What's different about this cell? It doesn't have any dendrites. That's right. So biology is just like English in what way? That all the rules get broken? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So this is a really special neuron. And this is the one exception that it's worth teaching and this is a sensory neuron. This is the neuron that brings information in from the cell from the, the, the skin and the muscles from the rest of the body. It brings in information to the brain and the spinal cord. And it does so by having receptors out in the periphery in the skin trigger an action potential at the far end and that action potential travels all the way up to where the cell body lives in a group of, of neurons just outside the spinal cord and even though that action potential gets into the cell body there's no place to go but it really follows the other branch of the axon because it's one axon that branches and that branches goes into the spinal cord to bring that information in so it's a straight information pathway bringing the sensory information in touch pain pressure um, temperature from the skin or stretch or contraction from the muscles comes in and gets straight into the spinal cord where it can be processed sent to the brain for perception or processed for motion. Um, but it's a straight-in pathway, so it's a very important cell. And if we were to try to model what was going to go on in that circuit, you know, we'd be applying temperature changes or pressure changes down here at the skin, and the information would get into the, the central nervous system that way. Okay. And what is that called again? A sensory neuron or a dorsal root ganglion neuron.